Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I make a lot of different animal videos here, which includes my giant schnauzer, Vader. He is a one-year-old giant schnauzer that we got in 2020. And so today's video is gonna be five things that you need to know about giant schnauzers before you might get one. I don't claim to be an expert on dogs in any type of way. Vader is the only giant schnauzer I've ever had. And to be honest, the only one I've ever seen in person. And so this is just me sharing my personal experience Experience, and I hope that's helpful for you guys. The first thing you need to know is that this breed is expensive. They are becoming more popular, but they are still a somewhat rare breed. And so finding a quality breeder can be challenging as with any animal. And it took us a while to even find somebody where we were placed on a list and had to pay a deposit before he was even born. So this did take months and months and this breeder was out of state. And so we had to pay shipping costs on top of his price tag. All in all, Vader costed $4,000, which included his shipping and the ear cropping procedure, which is a breed standard for giant schnauzers. And it might just be your preference. So if you do decide that, it's going to be extra veterinary costs on top of the typical. The second thing to consider is the breed's history. Giant schnauzers showed up somewhere in the 1800s, originating in Germany as farm and protection dogs. On the farms, they were ratters, and so that's why they have that long beard and those iconic eyebrows, because it protected their faces from the rats. They eventually evolved to become protection dogs and working dogs for the military and police, where they participated in both world wars. Giant schnauzers do not need any type of formal protection training because it comes extremely natural to them. They're very, from my experience with Vader, very weary of strangers, particularly men in my experience. I don't know if that's just because they're bigger with like a deeper voice, but it's definitely something that comes very naturally to them. Vader even gets upset when we're driving in the car and he sees somebody just walking on the street. Like, mind your business, Vader. Third is their basic needs as a large dog. This can be applied to many different breeds, but talking about breed specificity, they do need a lot of exercise, both physically and mentally. They do need to be socialized because they are very dominant, especially in my personal experience with other male dogs. Ever since Vader was a baby, he fearlessly tries to take the role of alpha and he needs it, especially with the male dogs. I've seen that a lot and with the female dogs. And so sociality is also a very important part of their training as well as basic obedience and training, especially if you have children, because this is an extremely powerful and strong dog that will be out of control if you do not correct them in the proper ways. They can be extremely stubborn in their personality. If you're not training them properly, they will just in spite of you not do what you want. And so there are some challenges that go along with their general personality, which is super adventurous, super strong, super powerful, and just so much energy. And so that leads me into number four, which is their individualism. Apparently, males are always a little bit larger and so you're going to be dealing with a stronger bigger dog in that situation and so again their personalities are individual as much as their breed specificity and so their individualism can be a challenge because they're very they're literally the definition of a velcro dog they need to be with you all the time it seems and so that's not something bad if your lifestyle is able to accommodate that and so they really really enjoy just being with their family they get extremely attached again they are literally your shadow they need to be doing whatever you're doing that doesn't mean that they cannot be left alone ever he can be fine whenever we have to leave him but it is quite rare that we ever leave vader so if you're a type of person that is never home this probably is not going to be the right breed for you because they just really really enjoy being with you and with their families 
And number five in this short video today is the issues that are seen in this breed. And so this is regarding their health. And so a lot of these are typical in the large breed dogs, such as hip and elbow dysplasia, but they also are susceptible to certain diseases as schnauzers, such as progressive retinal atrophy, which is an eye problem disease. And so this comes from improper grooming, which is another thing you really need to be on top of with this breed. They are hypoallergenic, so they don't shed. They don't have fur, they have hair that's kind of like ours, but that does require extensive grooming and it does get quite gross when they're eating, drinking, and so on. They are also prone to a bleeding disorder called von Wilbrin's disease as well as autoimmune thyroiditis. And so this is something that a quality breeder will test for and provide paperwork for on the bloodline before you purchase the dog, which is really, really important. They also can be prone to bloat or gastric torsion. So some people, they have to feed their giant schnauzers raw or have a special diet. We feed Vader science diet, large breed puppy, which has worked really perfectly for us. No issues there with his digestion, thankfully. And so having a giant schnauzer is an extreme privilege that I really love but it is definitely the hardest, most challenging breed I've ever owned. This is the first dog I've ever gotten from a breeder. All of our other dogs are rescues, uh, Craigslist dogs, and things like that. And so there is no issues in purchasing a quality dog. I always say adopt or shop. It's not cool to, you know, shame people who decide to put their money and time and investment into a high quality uh, purebred dog. And if we held breeders to the ultimate standard of high quality dogs, then these shelters would not be overrun. But when you have cheap dogs and a constant supply of customers, then we are creating the demand for low quality breeders. And so no hate on any person who decides to only get adopted dogs or only chooses to get purebred dogs, it's totally your choice and we can't be out here shaming people for their decisions. Alright guys, thank you for checking out this video. I hope it was helpful and I will definitely be back with some more videos of Vader's adventures and so thank you. Please subscribe and like if you want and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Thank you.